Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Factorio, shall we? And I'd like to present a complete beginner's guide to the game here in 2023 with the aim of trying to help you understand the controls of the game, some very basic concepts in the game, the UI, and the philosophy overall so that you can get into this game and enjoy it. Now, this is not going to be a guide about perfect precision, efficiency, min-maxing, advanced builds, um, you know, hyper-accelerated strategies that reflect uh, any of the top content creators in this uh, world of Factorio. Instead, what I'm going to try to do is just walk you through beginning a new factory and explain the very basics of the game so that you can, on your own, discover the new technologies, the new ideas, and design your own factory with as little guidance as possible in the sense that I want your spaghetti to be your own spaghetti. I don't want to tell you how to build the perfect way so that your factory looks exactly like mine, but rather give you the tools to design your own kind of fun. Uh, spaghetti is what Factorio players call the sprawling mess that your factory becomes, and that's the beauty of the game. Now, I started playing this game recently and have been putting a lot of time into it, really enjoying it, and getting a fantastic amount of help from the community around Factorio, players that enjoy the game, that are much more knowledgeable. And what I'm going to do here is present a guide that gives you the tips that I've received and things that I've figured out through trial and error. So that if you uh, have always wanted to try this game but not been able to get into it, or if you want to just see what this game is all about, you can play along with me and understand um, some of the key concepts. So I'm going to start a new game. Now, there's a tutorial that is built into this game, and I did it myself. I recommend that you try it but I didn't find it to actually be that fantastic of a tutorial. It does give you some basics, which is nice, um, but it really wants you to do some specific things. Um, and I find that once you do the first few scenarios or lessons from the tutorial, the best thing is to just jump into a free play. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna jump into a free play, okay? So we're gonna go into a free play and build our own experience. now. I'm going to go with the default map generator. I'm not going to change any of these resources. I'm not going to do anything about the terrain, but I am going to go into the enemy tab, okay? And I'm going to go into peaceful mode. Now, what this means is that the enemies will not actively attack or expand. They will still defend themselves, okay? Um, but I think that this is something that is extremely useful so that you can just learn the basics of the game without having to build defenses and worry about biters and um, all manner of critters coming to uh, just regularly attack your base. So I'm going to click peaceful mode. Now this protects you from most things. If you attack the enemies though, they will retaliate, okay? You can reduce this even further. Um, by changing some of the settings um, with the the enemies themselves so that they just won't be aggressive. But I'm just going to put it this way. Peaceful mode, not change anything else, okay? Um, on any of my uh, tabs and just click play. And you start out with a little cutscene, which is, oh my goodness, our ship didn't turn out correctly uh, with its landing procedure or flying procedure for that matter. Okay, and it says this is the Factorio free play. Your task is to launch a rocket into space. Not like this. Um, this was launch a rocket into the ground. You will need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. So, this tooltip is actually incredibly helpful because it gives you the arc of the game. What we're going to try to do is build a large enough factory so that we can launch into space. 
you know, like in RimWorld or Satisfactory. Uh, that is the goal. We got to get off of this thing. Okay. Um, now, start small is correct. Work your way up with automation is fantastic. And we don't need to protect ourselves too much against the natives in peaceful mode. It is still possible to accidentally aggro them. Um, but in our purposes, we're not going to have to worry about that uh, for the time being. So let's talk about the controls. Okay. First of all, you can zoom in and you can zoom out with the mouse wheel. You see right here in the upper right, there is a mini map. You can see the main map screen uh, in, in the central window. And if I push M, you'll see, okay, this is a slice of the map that I'm seeing here. It's actually the mini map that's visible. And then this central square is kind of like what's visible on my screen, what I can see with my character. Um, and red dots up here represent enemies but remember they're just going to do their own thing up here and not fight us so we don't really have to worry about that at the moment now what we do want to look at though are these checkered areas so you can zoom in to the map screen also using the mouse wheel and you'll see that we have stone right here copper ore over here coal here and iron here there's also some stone over by this water and there's water all here we're kind of on the coast so all of these features are important we're going to need coal we're going to need stone we're going to need iron we're going to need copper and water uh, to begin our factory so we have all of those things and we're ready to go one thing though that i want to just tell you right out of the gate is this looks like the map factorio is a game at least for me about blowing your mind and what I mean by that is this map is effectively infinite in all directions. So you do not have to worry about exhausting these resources because you're going to run out. You can't exhaust these resource nodes. It tells you the capacity of each um, node. It'll say right here, for example, this stone uh, node has 217k stone inside it. And once I mine all of that out, um, this quarry will be empty. There's no more stone to get. But that doesn't mean there's not more stone on the map. I'll just have to go elsewhere to find it. Like right over here, for example. But even beyond that, there is stuff that I can't even see. Look at me scrolling out. Look at the map now. Okay? So one of the things is uh, that I didn't realize was that I had way more space than I thought I did. This is a game that is about largesse sprawling huge expansive factories we're going to start small but we want to keep that largeness in mind because scale is the name of the game in factorio okay i'm going to push escape to get out of the map now i can move my character around with wasd okay i'm running around like so and while i'm running around i have some commands that i can do with my character so if I go over to this right here, and you'll see that if I move my mouse over this object, it gets these yellow corners around it, which means it's interactable. Now, underneath the map in the upper right, there is a tooltip that appears that says small uh, piece of the spaceship wreck, and it's got 50 health. And if I right click on this, um, a progress bar appears, and I just dismantle that, okay? And I can just right click on that and just dismantle that. Now, while I'm dismantling that, um, for the spaceship itself, I'm just kind of getting rid of it. I'm not actually picking anything up and gaining anything. Now, if I push E, it opens up my inventory. On the left of this panel, it tells me what I'm carrying in my character's inventory. So all of these spaces are my inventory. In Factorio, you don't have to worry about weight or anything like that, okay? All you have to concern yourself with um, are slots. So each square takes up a slot and each um, item can stack up to a certain size. But right now we're good. We have plenty of space. On the right portion of this panel is my crafting menu. These are the things that I can build. Okay. And I can change tabs. And I can go from logistics to production to intermediate products to combat. 
and I can build any of these things that I want by simply mousing over it, okay, um, and clicking on it, right? But in order to build it, I need the required ingredients. So actually, I can't build very much at the moment because I don't have hardly any ingredients. So even for this wooden chest, I need wood. For this transportation belt, this conveyor belt, I need iron plates and iron gear wheels. So this is very much a game about crafting and building, okay, and gathering. And we're going to be assembling a factory. At first, we're going to have to do this by hand, but increasingly we're going to automate everything. And that is the name of Factorio. Automate every single step of the way. That's another key concept that at first I didn't get. But you don't want to be building things by hand. You want to let your factory do it for you. Now, trees are where you can get wood. Again, in the upper right, okay? You can see the mini-map, and if I mouse over these this red tree, I get the tooltip under the mini-map, and it tells you that the expected resources from this will be for wood. If I right-click on this, I'll start chopping it, and you'll see the um, little uh, dialogue appear telling me that I got plus four wood, and then in parentheses after that number, there was a five, meaning that now I have five total wood. If I chop this one, it'll say plus four wood, and there's a nine, meaning now I have nine total wood. I can push E to open my inventory, and you can see the wood right there. Let's talk a little bit more about this, um, the UI before I uh, get into some building. So in the bottom right, you'll see our character, and um, the weapon that we're using currently, and the armor that we have on, and our sub-weapons if we wish to equip them. You can build all the weapons in the world that you want, but in peaceful mode you really shouldn't need them. Uh, but if you like them and just want to have them and see what you can do with weapons, they're a lot of fun, go ahead. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that, especially right now. In the center of the screen, you're going to see um, your action bars, and you have action bar one, action bar two, and these you can um, put items on uh, to select them easily uh, by using the corresponding number keys. And you can also um, go ahead and uh, change action bars by pushing shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four to have even more sets of action bars um, six, seven, uh, you know, and go back to shift one to get bar one and two. This game has a ridiculous amount of keyboard commands, okay? And it's fantastic. There's conveniences uh, the, and shortcuts for doing so many different things. Usually when you mouse over, the game will tell you, like, what the keyboard command for something is, uh, but you can always go into the settings and look at the controls and open this up to get different key bindings, change the bindings if you want, or locate something. You can even search this. For example, if you wanted to like learn how to do rotation, and you're like, how do I rotate something that I'm trying to build? And you just start typing rotate up here, and it tells you like every option for rotating something on your quick bar, something um, that you're interacting with, um, on and on and on. So there's so much to this game about the control. I'll explain a little bit of it, but it's fantastic how many shortcuts are built in. So just explore that as you're learning the game and need more tools, okay? Now, if you're just starting out, if you've never played Factorio, some of these buttons on the right will not appear for you. They will be grayed out um, and you have to uncover them through research, like robotics, so your screen might not look exactly the same as mine, um, but don't worry, you will get more functionality as you progress in the game. Now, also over here, okay, in the upper right, there's all sorts of really uh, useful screens that you can get, like for example, um, if you push T, it wants us to start a research project, okay? And research is how you unlock new blueprints, new recipes, new functionality. But we can't do any research at the moment because, for example, automation, which is something we really want to get, you can see it requires red science packs to get this. So this red beaker means red science packs. And 
um, we cannot research anything until we get red science. So we're not producing red science. So I'm going to push T to close this for now. Research is a little bit further away from us. Also, right here, you can click um, this to open your blueprint library to see what you can, um, what blueprints you've stored and what you can build. Okay. And then here, this is the production screen. This is fantastic information once your factory gets going on like how many of each item you're producing per um, over time and uh, wh where your your power is going perhaps, um, how much pollution you're making, how your fluids are doing once you start working with fluids. Um, and so this is a beautiful screen for just getting real-time statistics on uh, the comings and goings, the production and consumption of your factory. Um, now this one, the mortarboard tips and tricks, this is super useful, okay? It will look different to you based on which tips and tricks you've been exposed to and which you've read, but this is actually, in my opinion, the better tutorial that Factorio has built into it. Um, it is just some of these, like you can watch a little video about how to do something. Some of these, like if it has a play button, okay? Um, like this will tell you, you know, you can replay the tutorial and it'll tell you how to do things. And it gives you all sorts of information about controls, strategies, and you can search this. It's fantastic. So if you're ever wondering about something or want a refresher or would like clarification, the tips and tricks um, panel is where you should go for that. Um, bonuses, we don't have any right now. Um, trains, we have none. And achievements are achievements. So what we need to do right now um, that we've talked a little bit about the UI is think about getting resources together. So what do we start with? Let's open up our inventory. We start with a minor drill, a stone furnace, and some wood, okay? So the minor drill, all right, is what we want for getting resources together, all right? Um, and we want to be mining and acquiring everything. We want copper, we want iron, we want stone, we want coal. So we can only do one of these. So right now I see my burner miner drill over here. But if I go into my crafting panel, remember you push E to open this screen, your inventory is on the left, your crafting is on the right, and I select burner miner drill. If I wanted to make another one of these, I would need three iron plates and three iron gear wheels, okay? And I need a stone furnace to turn raw iron into plates okay so these are all things that i want now by the way you see how it's dark time is passing as i'm talking to you you can always push shift spacebar to pause the game now while you have the game paused you can't do very much um, but you can certainly look at things um, in your inventory uh, but Overall, it's not meant to be a game that you play on pause mode, and it doesn't really matter too much for our purposes. Um, we can build lights and things later if we want. But I'm going to... You have a little flashlight with your character, by the way, when you start. Say, all right, first thing I want to get is fuel. Because if I want to build um, anything, more minor drills, more kinds of automation, then I'm going to need to get coal. So this is a game about scaling, and right now, most of our work is going to be done, all right, by hand. And what I mean is, if I want iron, I'm gonna need to go down here to where the iron is. Remember, you can push M on the map and just locate iron, stone, coal, and copper very easily, the checkerboarded, color-coded resource nodes. And if I just go over to this, I can just get it, right-click it. You don't need to have a pickaxe. You automatically can do this. Now, you get this pretty slowly. So this process is time-consuming, but at the beginning, this is what you have to do. So I got some iron, right? So I'm going to actually just build a few things right away. I'm going to go ahead and open my inventory with E. Now, I'm going to take a burner miner drill and I'm going to just put it right down here on my hotbar. So I'm going to just left click from my inventory, the burner miner drill, and drag it down to number one on my hotbar, and then just click it in there. 
I'm going to right click to clear um, what I'm holding. And I'm going to do the same thing with the um, furnace. Okay. And I'm going to right click. And I don't want to do that with either of these. Now, by the way, um, you can just left click. You don't have to actually drag. You pick up the furnace and then left click the slot you want it. Now, once it's in my hotbar slot one, I can push one, okay, um, to turn this on. And now you'll see, I'm going to zoom into my character a little bit. There's a red burner miner drill um, in front of me that I can move around because I'm holding this in my hand. All right. Let me tell you one of the most useful keyboard commands in Factorio that is not explained super thoroughly in the tutorial, which is Q. If you push Q on the keyboard, it will empty what's in your hand. That is so important to know because I sat here when I first started and I was trying to, to right click. I was just pushing escape. I was trying to get this off of my hand once I had it. You have to push Q to get rid of it, okay? So bear that in mind. Now, as I drag this burner miner drill around, it's red where I can't build it but it becomes green over resources because I can build it there. However, you see the yellow arrow coming out of this drill. That's telling me where the output will be. I want the output to point toward me. I want it to be on the outside. So I'm just going to put this burner miner drill over the coal like this. And then now it wants to get coal for us, but you can see this red triangle with the fuel sign because it has no fuel. So if I mouse over this, the tooltip on the right tells me it's a burner miner drill. It has a red um, circle indicator that says no fuel. It gives you statistics. It tells you how fast it mines. It tells you the area. It's two by two, which you can see it's covering up a two by two area on the map. It, it's expected to give us 396 um, coal. It has this much pollution and it has this, or it produces this much pollution and it has this much health. Health isn't super important for us because we're not going to get attacked. Um, and it says it consumes burnable fuel. So we need coal. So let's just go and get coal. That's the early game fuel for us. And I'm just going to right click on coal and just get it some coal. All right. I'm just clicking away, getting coal. All right. Now watch this. I have now eight pieces of coal that I've gathered in my inventory. I'm going to left click on this. I'm going to push E to close my inventory. I'm still holding the coal in my hand and I can then dump this in here. Okay. Now you can dump this into the burner miner drill by just holding control and then left clicking onto it. Okay. You can also click on the burner miner drill and open up this screen. And you'll see right here, it's working and it's using coal. And if I want it to continue, okay, um, I can drag, I can, this is my inventory on the left. I can just click coal and put it out here. All right, but you'll see that, hey, wait a minute, it has stopped. Why is this stopped? It's giving me an error message right here when I click on this that says waiting for space in destination. Also, if I mouse over it on the right, it tells you the same error message. You can see that it's physically stopped doing stuff. And that is because you see right here, this is the arrow. It's telling you where the coal is coming out. It's just dumping it onto the ground, but the pile is full right now. And so because there's coal blocking this from producing and dumping out more coal, it has stopped. It will not work anymore. This progress bar is telling you um, how far along it is on burning this piece of coal. And this progress bar is telling you, um, you know, how far along it is on getting another piece of coal. If I were to pick this up, okay, by pushing, you have to get really close to it, okay? And then um, push F with the keyboard and you will pick it up and you'll see it starts working again. And there it goes. It's produced some more and it can't make any more because it's here. So this is annoying. This isn't helping me. How can I get around this problem? Well, all we have to do is build ourselves a box. So I'm going to go back to the logistics panel and I'm going to select boxes, okay? Now I'm going to, this is something you have to also keep in mind and I get tricked by this. These are recipes and they become highlighted 
see, these are kind of like grayed out. They're, I can't build them right now, but when I can build it, it becomes colored in more vibrantly, and it has a number indicating how many of it I can build in the bottom right corner. I can build four of these. I want to build all of these. Now, if I left click, I will build one, but if I right click, I will build five. And so now I've built four boxes. I'm going to left click these boxes, and I'm just going to put them onto my action bar. All right, I'm going to right click. Um, now, actually, instead of doing this, um, right clicking to clear this away, I can actually just push E, and I've got it in my hand. Now, I'm going to put a box right where the coal is coming out like this. And now it's going to continue producing coal using the coal that I've put in there. Now it's down to six pieces. And in this, as this goes down, it'll go down to five pieces. And each time this bar fills up, it's putting a coal into this box. Now, if you push Alt on the keyboard, it will either hide or show what resources are in a building or a container. So if I push Alt, you'll see that I can clearly note that there are coal in this box. Now, if I click on the chest, you'll see that there are nine, now 10 pieces of coal inside here. And this is how big the inventory capacity is for this wooden chest. So this can fill this whole thing up provided it has enough fuel to do it. Now, if I don't want it to fill it up, I can push this red X Okay, and then I can start canceling out boxes. Like if I only want it to fill up two slots, for example, if I don't want it to, to work too hard or if I only want it to fill up this many slots, you can just X out slots like that. And then if you want to undo that, you can just click that again and get rid of that. I don't want to put any limits on how many are in the box. I'm good with this. Now, if you want um, to take what's out of the box with an empty hand, you can just control left click on the box and get it, or you can come into this screen by clicking on it and then pick it up with the left click and then just drop it into your inventory. It will automatically sort it into the appropriate stack. Now, what I'm gonna do is um, go ahead and go to my inventory. I'm gonna pick up this coal, push E to close my inventory, and I'm gonna control click and dump all of this fuel in here. So this will just keep going while I'm doing other things. And this is the name of the game, automation. While I'm doing other things, I want this to be gathering coal, okay? So what we need to do while it's gathering coal is get a bunch of iron together, okay? So that we can start making plates. All right, so now that we have coal coming in, the next thing that we want to do is start turning our iron into plates so that we can build more burner mining drills and automate the process so we're not just running around and breaking things uh, to mine. I'm going to then build this stone furnace. So I'm just going to push two uh, because it's my first hot bar and build a stone furnace. Now, something that is fantastic about this game is if I build this right here, okay, and I don't like where I build it, I can just right click it and I am not destroying it like harvesting it for its resources but instead if I push E you'll see it just goes back into my inventory so it's kind of like you just pick it up and put it back in your inventory so you can easily move things around the game encourages you to do that it really wants you to optimize and innovate and that's part of the flow as you get better at the game as you mentally level up and learn what your factory should look like, how big it should be. You get new technologies, you have more understanding. You're gonna to wanna to change and optimize your factory or personalize it, specialize it, and the game lets you do that by not you know, putting any kind of um, attrition on you mining resources or picking up uh, things that you've built. So I'm just gonna put this nearby for the time being, but this is not in any way, any of this is stuff's permanent location. Now, this stone furnace, okay, it can take raw metal or raw stone or resources of some kind and turn it into um, a more refined type. So, for example, if I put iron in here, okay, you can see that it shows on the picture, it's going to turn it into a iron plate and it needs fuel and if you mouse over the fuel button you see we could actually burn wood or we could burn coal or rocket fuel nuclear fuel solid fuel 
Right now, all we have is coal. I'm just going to push control click on the coal right there. I'm going to open this up and I can, of course, just click over coal like this or, okay, I can go into my inventory um, and I can just grab this coal, close this, and then just push control click and just dump all the coal that will fit in there. Now, this can only hold 50 at a time, so you can't stack more than 50 in here, um, but unlike the burner mining drill, this can stack up in the furnace a bunch of plates for you, and it actually does not put them onto the ground. If there's no arrow on the production building, then what that means is it stores them inside it for now. So I'm going to click on this. I'm just going to say, give me these plates. So now I have six plates. So if I want to build more um, minor drills, okay, I've got plates, but I need wheels. Okay, so you say to yourself, well, how do I get iron gear wheels? All right, well, we get iron gear wheels by going into intermediate products. And you can see that they're right here. And each iron gear wheel takes two iron plates. So you can see ingredients two times iron plates. It takes half a second to craft one. And I have six iron plates, so thereby I can make three gear wheels. So if I right click on that, I'll make all of them. And I can produce these in my hands. You can queue items up. Now I'm building things so fast that they go away, but you can craft things and move. You can be running around and just crafting a whole bunch of stuff um, in your inventory by hand, okay? So that's just something that you can do in the game. What we need, though, is a bunch of iron. So while this is happening, while I'm getting coal here, I'm just going to come down and get myself a ton of iron. There's really not a better way to do this right now, so that's why you want to build drills, because this is painful. But... If you think about it, I know that I don't actually need that much to do this. What do I mean by that? If I go here and I just pick up my iron and I drop it in, it'll start burning away and we're going to make some plates. Now, this is got plenty of coal, but I'm just going to go ahead and just pick up all the coal and I'm going to um, top this off, okay? Now... If you control and right click, you will put half of the stack that you're holding in there. All right. So I can control right click on this box and dump half in here, or I can control left click and just drop all of it. And now we have a bunch more plates. I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, control click from here to just grab it. If you control left click, you grab it over here. Same thing. Control right click, you grab half of it. All right. Now I have plates and I have wheels and so i can go back to production and i can craft my own burner mining drill but wait no i can't because what's the last ingredient i need a stone furnace so we need to build a stone furnace so that's going to require stone now stone if i push the map you can see there's a big stone node right here but instead of going after that field you can also just go up to a big rock and break apart stone and this does two things. It clears the in, the uh, space for you so you can put buildings there where that was. I'm going to chop down this tree. Just open up our factory a bit. And it gives you resources. Sometimes you can get other things from rocks, okay? Um, but right now we just got a bunch of rocks. And I'm going to build four stone furnaces because that's the max. I'm just going to right click on that because I want them to be built. You can see I was running along and building them. And now I can finally build myself a minor drill, all right? And I've crafted it. And I want this minor drill on iron. This is the next piece of resource that I want. And I'm just gonna build it here for the time being like that. And once it's there, okay, it needs coal and we can get it. But in, before that, I'm gonna push three and I'm gonna put a box right on its output for now, okay? We're gonna be changing this uh, eventually. I'm gonna push Q to drop what's in my hand. But for now, I'm just going to control pick up some coal, come down here and pick up the coal and drop it in there. Now, I'm using coal so much right now by hand that it is worthwhile to just put it on my action bar, I suppose. I normally don't like to put resources on my action bar, um, but at this stage in the game, 
when we have to do so much dropping by hand, it, it's convenient to not have to open our inventory. If you ever want to take something off of your uh, action bar, you can just, or your hot bar, you click the middle mouse button, okay, on that icon, and it will disappear. And then you just push E and left click and drop it back down if you want it, okay? All right. So now we're getting iron ore. And um, this has a bunch of coal, but no iron to work with, okay? So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to control, pick up all this iron ore. I'm even going to take iron and put it over here. And I'm going to just control drop that in there. All right. Now I'm going to build another furnace just for now. Right there. Okay. Because I want to be able to make more. Yes, this, is, this can make all of our plates. But you see, it's taking time to do so. So if you want to scale up and make things faster... If you have another furnace that's also making plates, you can make them at twice the speed, provided you have enough iron and coal. And we really do have a lot of coal. This is going to give us plenty of coal. Okay, we'll make more of these later, but for the time being, this is fine. I'm going to just grab this, control, right click, drop that in there. Now we need some more iron. I'm going to grab iron. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to control, right click, control, right click, actually control, left click. Just equally distribute that. I'm going to pick up all these plates. And I need more burners, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say, look, I can already make one. Now, notice, though, that you can click on this to make it. Even though I didn't have those iron gear wheels, if I can have the ingredients and the capability to craft all of the pieces that I need, okay, um, I will handcraft those gears. So right now, I need gear wheels, um, which means I need st uh, stone, and I need uh, nine plates. I have a furnace, so I'm already good there. I have a drill, but the problem is I need more plates. So I'm going to pick this up. Okay, I could have just taken it from my hot bar as well, but I'm going to build another one. I'm going to build it here, and I'm going to just dump this in, and I'm going to put a box here. And very soon, we won't be using boxes, but this is okay for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and grab all the iron that's in both of these. I've got 20, okay? Um, I'm going to push 8 to grab this. Control click, control left click. That first one was a right click to do half. And now we're making even more plates. I'm going to just grab these plates, grab these plates. But you also don't have to go into the building to do that. You can just click on the building control left click and grab what's ever in there okay so now that we've done that um, I've got so many plates I can make burner mining drills but actually I need more furnaces so let's get some stone and let's make some more burner mining drills eventually we're going to try to get out of burner mining drills and you can see on our available resources we can already build electric mining drills okay and build offshore pump to get hydroelectric power um, well it's really steam power actually i should say um, we're using water burning it in the boiler into steam and then using a steam engine to create electricity so that we can power something like an electric mining drill and that's our goal but right now we still need to just do things with burners and coal because we're not to the point where we have that going eventually we'll replace this stuff but for now this is fine I'm picking up some stone. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just right-click these furnaces. And now I'm going to right-click burner mining drill. And you can see I'm making all of these gears down here. This comes in the lower left, like your crafting queue. And I'm making more drills. And this is fantastic. All right. I'm going to push one. Um, and I want some more coal. Okay. And I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to put a box here. I'm going to pick up some coal with control click and then I'm going to just pick up this control right click and now we're going to get some more coal I'm going to go down here and pick up all the iron that we've acquired and I'm going to start getting even more iron from our burners one okay and two you'll notice I don't have any boxes anymore so I'm just going to go ahead and right click use our wood to make some more boxes so I can dump my resources in here and I've got coal and I'm going to control right click, control left click, get all of these going. 
indeed. All right. So I'm going to grab all this coal and be happy. And then I'm going to come down here and just grab all the iron that we got. And now I'm up to 84 iron, okay, which is great. And I'm going to just grab a stack. I only hold 50 at a time, but I'm just going to control um, left click to fill this up. Control left click and um, you'll grab everything from your inventory. Now we put 50 here and we put 32 here. We need more coal in this. It's got it. So now we're making a ton of plates, okay, which is great. But you're going to start to see that it's annoying just dumping all these things into boxes and having to run around and grab so what we're going to do is start to build conveyor belts to ship these resources to where we want so that we don't have to do as much walking and to organize our facility better. But for now, the goal is to just try to start scaling up and harvesting as many resources as you can. This means we need iron, okay? This means we need to build more furnaces. I'm going to break this big rock and get myself some more stone so that I can... Um, go into production, right click, make a bunch more furnaces, and get plates going all day long. Something to know about iron plates is that you can never, and I mean never, have enough, okay? You are always going to want to have these things, and you're going to think that's crazy. You're going to be like, what do you mean? You know, but you really do need way more um, than you think, and so it's going to be in our interest to just try to scale this up even further okay and i'm going to build six right now you can build more but i'm just going to build this much i'm going to drop in this and i'm going to drop in this and this and then that and then i'm going to pick up some coal and then i'm going to take this coal and i'm going to say right click left click just get everything firing all right Come down here, grab some more iron. And come up here and dump in iron. All right, so you need some iron. You need iron. Everybody's got iron. Got more coal. Great. Let's look for some big rocks that we can break. Um, nah, I don't see any that convenient. There's one up there, but I'll just stand here and mine some while we're building stuff. So like many crafting games, your goal is, I mean, our end goal is to build a rocket and get out of here. But the goal is to kind of craft what we can with what we can find at first and then try to build the best blueprints and recipes that we've got and unlock more sophisticated stuff and keep pushing the limits we're going to explore try to find new resources that we can harvest but for now um you don't really need to explore the map too much we have on the map copper coal stone and iron already so we don't need to go super far to get anything else right now because this is all we're going to be using for quite some time also if i show you the map and i zoom in um, oop, the mini-map, I mean. Now, you can't zoom in past a certain point, sorry. Um, but you'll see that what happens is I've got all of my factories displaying. Everything in blue, these are things that I've built, okay? This blue is the spaceship that's crashed. These blues, look, you can see all of my plate furnaces right here, my burners. And these icons are a great way for you to know where resources are um, at a glance. All right, so let's go over here. Let's pick up all of this. I need to make as many furnaces as I can so I can make some more burner mining drills. Um, because, to be honest, I need... Uh, let's start picking up plates. There we go. I need more coal. All right. Okay. Now that we've got even more coal going and we built three more burners, I want to show you another function. If you have something built, so I have three burner mining drills, okay? You see they're on my hotbar as well. But if I go over it with my mouse and I push Q, that is the pipette, which means that now I am building whatever I have moused over and pushed Q on. I have duplicated that and I'm going to try to build one. 
You can only do this if you have it in your inventory. It does not work if you have enough raw resources to craft one on your own. You have to have crafted it first, and then if it's in your inventory, you can pipette it. So I actually want some more um, coal, so I'm going to build two of these, okay? And I'm going to, uh, you know, control right click and uh, just control left click that in there, grab all this coal, and we need some more boxes. So that's going to require some wood. So we'll just come over here and chop up some trees. However, if I wanted, instead I could craft iron chests. And they're bigger, um, and they're actually a little easier for me to get now that I have all these plates. So let's just make, like, um, actually let's just right click. Let's make five of them. Let's make some iron chests instead of our wooden chests. And I'm going to push E, open my inventory. I'm going to put these on my action bar, hot bar. And I'm going to push 4 to select it. I'm going to build one here and build one here and get more coal coming out. You'll notice that the iron chest is bigger than the wooden one. You see the wooden one has um, uh, only a little over one and a half rows. And then this one has, you know, uh, almost three and a third uh, full uh, rows to store things in. So it's nicer. I grab all of the coal that we've acquired. Okay, I'm going to push 5 and I'm going to start selecting... Um, to just drop in coal uh, to all of these places, okay? And they're not burning, not because they don't have coal, but because they don't have iron. So we're going to grab all the iron that we've got, and we're going to start turning this into plates. Like that. And now I'm going to grab all this coal and start... You see all the smoke, all the pollution that we're making? Um... Dropping these in here so that these machines can keep working, and then there they go. Okay, fantastic. So, we're doing a good job in that we have some plates coming on, some coal coming on. You know, this is fine. But now it's time to start automating for real. I have conveyors that I can build now, but I want to build inserters. And... I can't build those yet, okay? We're going to need to get, before we can build inserters, which are mechanical arms that grab something either out of a box or off the ground or off a conveyor belt and move them to somewhere else, okay? So they can supply machines, um, they can move resources around. Before we can do that, all right, unfortunately, we need to get copper uh, going, and we need electric circuits. So I'm going to go ahead. And uh, this needs fuel. There you go. And then let's see down here. I'm sure some of these want fuel as well. You can mouse over it to see how many fuel they have. This one only has four. Um, and this one has four as well. So let's give them some more. And let's go ahead and just start taking all these plates. And I want to make some more... Um, burner mining drills, but I need ovens. So on the way to the copper is a big rock. So let's go break this big rock. Let's just smash it. Get a bunch of stone, and I'm going to make a bunch of furnaces. Right-click on those to just get these going. All right. And now I'm going to build a burner mining drill over here on top of the copper. Now you'll notice like wherever the resources are most densely packed, that's where you're going to get the most copper. So you see when I'm building this um, burner mining drill, on the right in the tooltip, it's showing you expected resources. If I were to build it over here, I can still build it, but you see it's only going to get 40 copper. But if I built it like right here, it's going to get 3.3k copper, right? So that's a ton. I still like to kind of build from the outside in just so I don't have like raw copper just sitting around. Um, but it's up to you. I think this is a good place to build that one. Okay. I'm going to build a box for it to store in for the moment. And I'm going to run down here. And we need to get some coal because we can't power our drills without it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And see if there's any plates on any of these to pick up. And before I do this, I'm going to get all this iron. 
And let's go ahead and pick up the iron and just start dropping it in here as well. Um, these have so much fuel. Some of them do. These ones on the end don't have as much, but um, that's fine. Okay. And I'm going to grab fuel and just kind of top these off for the moment. And while I'm here, why not grab all this fuel? By the way, um, it should be, it'll become obvious, but you can't, there are certain things you can't grab unless your character is actually close enough to them. So if I go up here, um, you'll see how these outline in red. And if I try to pick it up, it'll say I can't reach it. So you have like a, a radius of how uh, far you can actually influence the machines and things with your character. So you actually have to physically move yourself around to get to some stuff. This becomes important if you build structures that block your path, for example. But for right now, we've got so much free space. All right, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to build um, four more burner mining drills. And I'm going to take some... Uh, coal and just drop this in here so that we can get some of this going. Now, I'm having all of this coal um, or this copper drop right there, for example. This is fantastic. This is even better. And this is the best. So, we'll go ahead and go uh, control right, control right, control right. There you go. And then I'm going to put boxes here just to gather. Okay. Um, and I'm going to grab copper. And with copper, I can make electronic circuits, but just like what I did with the iron, okay, I have to burn the copper into plates in a furnace, okay? So we're going to need some uh, stone. So let's go to these big rocks over here, break these up. They're fantastic for us. Break them all up, okay? And I'm going to go here, and I'm going to craft um, five furnaces for now. Now, you might say, I'm going to go, by the way, uh, go get all this copper before I leave. You might say, why would you build all of these furnaces in the same place? Well, I'm going to tell you. This is a kind of planning move, and you don't have to do this. And remember, you can always pick stuff up and move it. But you notice how I have all of my furnaces right here. This was just kind of an arbitrary decision at the beginning. But furnaces need coal. And no matter what they're smelting, copper or iron or stone or whatever it is, they need coal. So they share that resource. So because of that, all right, I can have my furnaces in a configuration where if I had a conveyor belt, okay, that was running, that was, uh, well, it won't fit if I do it like that. Um, if I had a conveyor belt, okay, that was running and had inserters grabbing the coal and putting it in, I would need one, two, three, okay, space. So I need a space for the inserter a space for the conveyor belt and a space for another inserter there and this should work i think um let me just test it one two nope need to move it one more there we go one two three there okay so if i were to build um like this i could run a line of um coal here and then give it to each of these furnaces regardless of what they're making i'm going to put copper on my bar and we're just going to start dropping copper in here like that and dropping coal in there like that i'll pick up more uh, this one is not working anymore this is great because it ran out of resources so you'll notice it stopped moving you say why are you not producing you've got fuel it, be, it says because it's got no mineable resources. So I'm just going to right-click on this, right-click on its box. I'm going to push Q to pipette the existing burner, and I'm going to make another one that's just further back on the coal. All right? 
and I'm going to put a box here for it and I'm going to then select the coal and just drop it in there and then there we go we're baking coal again here we go here we go and I'm going to grab all these plates and I'm going to grab all these plates look at my inventory I'm doing great on plates and what do plates mean plates mean I can make circuits circuits mean I could start to make inserters and I could start to get electricity okay now I can't run inserters unfortunately until I have electricity either so let's do all of that all right I need for electricity I'm going to need one offshore pump okay I'm going to need um two boilers and four steam engines just to start out okay so I'm going to build one pump, one, two boilers, and one, two, three, four engines, all right? Now, you'll notice that this is getting cumbersome because I have to craft all of this stuff by hand, but it's okay at the beginning to do this, all right? So I'm instead going to look for where do I want my electricity to come from? I need water. This looks pretty close over here. So let's just run over to this source of water. Try to find your closest large water source for yourself. And once you do, put all this stuff on your bar so that you can easily access it. Like that. Oh, wait. Here you go. Like that. Oh, I got to clear this out. Oh, boy. There it goes. Okay. So now, I'm going to build a pump okay so i'm just going to push x to shift my hot bars and i'm going to push one to build the pump now the pump will show you where it can build okay with these green squares part of it needs to go in the water and then part of it needs to come out i'm just going to build it right here for now if you don't want this ship stuff in the way you can just right click to clear this space okay some of the ship stuff by the way you'll see that it gives you resources like this one has iron plate and if you have alt on, it'll tell you like what you get from breaking it. Some of it does give you resources. Some of it gives you nothing. All right, there we go. Just get this stuff out of my way. Clear my path. Okay, so now that I have an offshore pump coming in, I'm going to need pipes. So I'm going to go to um, logistics and I'm just going to build like 10 pipes for now. I don't need a lot, but this is good. Build them up here. Okay, I'm going to build a pipe like that okay but i actually don't need the pipe because i can go right into the boiler if i want all right and so at this stage what we're looking at is we have an offshore pump that's just going to get itself okay some water it, and it actually requires no power to do this it's just putting out water the water drop here with the arrow that's blue means water is coming out here I next need to build a boiler which will take the water and turn it into steam. Now, I have to connect the pipes correctly. You'll see that the pipes on the boiler, there's three of them. There is an input-output for water on the left and the right if I have it oriented like this. And on the bottom, there is a steam pipe that's coming out, that cloud. I need to connect the water to the water, okay? I'm going to do it like this. Water to water. I'm going to build another one. Water to water, okay? And then the steam needs to go to the steam engine. This thing can take steam, okay, and turn it into electricity. I'm going to build one here. I'm going to build one here. I'm going to build one here. And I'm going to build one here, okay? And the ratio in general, I believe, is something like one boiler to two engines i think you might actually be able to get four engines um to it we could test that uh in a moment but this ratio uh is what i start out with and you can scale this up as you need okay water will pass through here all right and you can keep scaling this up now if you were interested all right if i just right click this and right click this and take that down you'll notice how this pattern that i built okay is something that I might want. I did the same thing for the next part of this. 
So if I push Control C, it opens up the copy um, option, and you'll see that my mouse now has the copy icon on it. And then I can just left click and drag, and I can select these three items. Everything that's selected will have a green box around it, and you can also see at the top of the tooltip what items are in there. I've got a boiler and two engines. I'm going to just um, let go, and then now you can see I've got the same construction, and if I have the pieces, I can just paste it down. And even if I don't have the pieces, I can put it down, okay? And I can ghost build it. Now, if I were to push Q to, con to clear that out, I could actually push control V to bring it back and you can push control V to cycle through um, different structures that you've copied to the clipboard, okay? So this is a great way to like replicate a procedure. Now I'm gonna just push Q to get rid of this. And then all you have to do to build these is just push Q to pipette it, okay? On the ghosted item and it will just select what you need. And then now I've built it. And it just kind of lets you hash things out so that you can plan. All right, I'm gonna leave this ghosted stuff here, but these need coal, okay? So they need fuel. So we're gonna need to give them some coal to get going. So I'm just going to control right click, control left click. These have coal now, all right? And um, eventually, okay, these will start working, but they're not plugged into an electric network. So what does that mean? It means we need to build some power poles I'm going to right click on power poles. Okay. They don't have anywhere to put their electricity. So they've got steam generating, but there's nowhere for them to put it. So I'm going to take my poles and I'm going to put them on my bar and I'm going to build a power pole. Now power poles just take wood that you can get from chopping trees and copper cable, which you get from processing plates. So you can come down, chop down more trees if you want wood. And eventually you can build power poles that are bigger that take metal. I'm going to just get rid of this. Now, the power pole, when I want to build it, you'll see that it has this teal square around it. Okay? This is the area of influence that it could connect to. So I'm going to just start one right here. Okay? And I'm going to then build another one to connect it to right here. Okay? You see the power icon has turned off for these. And I'm going to then... Um, build one here, move it over here, and run it in the most efficient way. Now, you can just line this up yourself, or if you hold left click, if you click it and hold left click and walk around, your character will start to build power lines at the max extension that they can possibly go, okay? Now, I don't actually want that because I need one to connect here um, to this, so given that it looks like our ghosted structure right here won't actually work because I need a power pole that does connect to this. And then I'm going to get rid of this one, right click it, pick it up and build it as far as it will go. You'll know how far it can go because the line will actually connect it. All right. So you can just do it yourself and get it where you want it. Or like I said, you can um, click it and then just hold left and then start moving like that all right uh i'm back from a little break there so basically our power construction is set up correctly but nothing's happening because we're not using any power so let's go ahead and build more power lines um, so that we can get power coming in okay and we can start using electricity to make our lives a little easier. Just gonna chop down some trees and we're gonna make as many poles as we can because it's gonna take a lot of these poles to get home, all right? So now I've got this, I'm just gonna pipette that and I'm going to build here. And you can see if I zoom way out, this is where we need to get with our electricity is kind of through here. So I'm going to just uh, build it and just run all right and then now we can get to a place where uh, we can provide power like this and 
And we're going to want the power to kind of be... Um, mm, actually, a little bit closer than it is at the moment. Yeah, we're going to want it to be here. We need it to be in the inside of this. Like this. Okay. And then now, we've got power coming all the way over here, which is, you know, phenomenal. But also, we can start to get some power to these. And I'll show you why in a moment. Let me just get all this picked up. And let's pick, put some coal away. Fill all these up. And make sure all this is filled up as well. Okay. Grab all of the plates that I can. Fantastic. Let's go get the iron that's available. All right. And, well, you say... Let's just drop all the iron in, and we're making a bunch of plates. And this is great. So we're making plates, but we're having to transfer everything. Now what can we do with this electricity? Well, check this out. We're going to make some conveyor belt. I'm going to make, I don't know, a bunch of it for now. And I'm going to make some inserters as well. Now, these take a while to make because I'm having to produce all of these resources by hand. As we move on in this series, we're going to automate everything. Remember, you want to automate everything. I'm just trying to move forward because I want to show you um, some of the benefits of electricity. But we can, we want to, everything that we can make, we want to automate. And I'm talking from the smallest resource to the largest that's possible. We want to automate plates, wires, sticks, wheels, circuits, science. We want to automate, um, you know, the production of conveyor belts, inserters, okay? Now, we could use burner inserters, but by the way. Um, we didn't have to jump to electricity, but I like to jump to electricity um, as soon as possible, okay? And let's go ahead now. I'm going to select these conveyors that we've built, all right? And I'm going to start putting them in more uh, prominent places for us, but we can put it right here for now. This is fine. We'll rearrange our um, hot bars later. Okay, so let me go ahead and build conveyors. Now remember, conveyors will take things and move them in the direction that the arrow is pointing. So I'm gonna build this path, okay, along the middle, like that. All right. And I'm also going to build some conveyors down here. And I'm going to build some conveyors um, up here. All right. I'm just going to mimic this. Then I'm going to say, okay, all of this coal that we're getting, this is fantastic. But what if instead of a box, okay, I'm going to right click, pick up the box, all the coal that's inside. Right click, pick up the box. Right click, pick up the box. These are going to want to put out coal, and they're going to want to put them where the arrow is. So instead of dumping it into a box, what if we have the coal get dumped onto a conveyor, okay? And now I'm just kind of moving the conveyor belt. You can move the conveyor belt by pushing R to rotate it, okay? And even if you've already placed it, you can push R to change its direction or rotation, whatever you want to do, all right? So now you see... There is coal that's moving along this line, okay? What we now want to do is have an inserter, okay? Grab coal from this line and put it into the furnace for us. Automate it. As long as it's within this blue square, it's going to receive power, okay? So I have it moving here, and I have one up here, okay? And I want this for all of these. Here here, 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 all right, you see, I'm just kind of putting con um, inserters on all of these, oops, did I rotate that one the wrong way, let me see, no, these are going right, all right, I'm going to pipette this, 
to here, and I'm just going to rotate this to here. Um, and we're out of inserters, so let's build some more. And let's build some more conveyor like that. So now, these would grab coal if these machines need them, but they don't need coal right now, okay? If these furnaces needed it, they would grab it. They don't need it because they don't have the right stuff, okay? And we need to give it the right stuff. So what we're going to do is go down here, and I'm going to power these up for the time being. Okay. Like that. Now these will start producing iron. I'm going to go get some copper. This running back and forth, this is something that we will stop, okay, very soon. Those all need power, but I don't have any coal with me. I'm going to go quickly over to our power station. You can see now everything is moving. Everything was frozen because it had stored up all its electricity, but it didn't, nothing was drawing power, so it didn't need to do any work, all right? So the reason that they weren't working isn't because it wasn't set up correctly, it was because we weren't using electricity for anything, and now we are. Now watch this. If I start putting in copper, okay, to all of these furnaces, all right, now they're making copper, okay? And watch this. I'm going to take an inserter, okay, and I'm going to start putting them up here. Now they don't work right now because we don't have power, so all we have to do is just build a power line. Now, I'm going to build it up here, um, and I'm going to build it here so that I maximize the amount of influence for my power lines. All right, I need some more power poles. Let's build those. You will always need those. And now you can see, look at this. This furnace is producing, okay, copper plates from copper, and it's grabbing, okay, what's inside here, and it's putting it out here. Now, this is pretty good, our setup right now, for distributing coal. But we're going to need to change things around when we want to actually provide these furnaces with ore. Okay? Um, and I'll explain that in a moment. But we can actually sort of keep it as is if we want to get a little bit... Uh, intensive on how we use our lanes on the belt. You'll notice that a belt has two lanes, okay? So right now, where the arrow is, all of these burner mining drills are putting coal onto the top lane. Nothing is going on the bottom lane. But if I had a burner mining drill that was pointing on the bottom, then I would be getting coal on both lanes, okay? And I can either do it like that all right, or another way to get coal onto both lanes, um, just for demonstration purposes, would be if I built a separate lane right here of a conveyor and then had this go like this and then dump... Oh, not like that, sorry. I have to give one more space. Here we go. Like that. So now I'm getting coal on both sides of this conveyor belt. Okay, because this guy is dumping his coal onto the other lane. Now, that's not the most elegant way to do it. I'm just doing it to demonstrate it to you. These are not working anymore because they're full. Their output is full. But what's great about Factorio is once coal is needed, it will pull, this will start working again. Once there's a space here, this will turn on again and start making coal. So it kind of goes on demand if you set things up correctly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, just keep the power line system going, all right, so that we now have plates. These can't make any more plates because um, what's going on is they're all full. But what we can do temporarily, okay, this is just a stopgap, is I'm going to take an inserter and I'm going to just put a box right here. And this will fill this box up with plates and it will just now make all the plates that it possibly can for us. So that now when we want to get plates, we can just come to one place. Okay. So what did we do in this episode? We started to automate by getting electricity for inserters, okay? Now, we also 
have begun building plates. We've talked about clearing rubble, clearing trees, conveyor belts, inserters, electricity, the theory of scale, um, and really introduced the controls and the UI. But I'm gonna show you something fun that you can do, okay, with um, burner mining drills, if you want. Right now, this is um, a less cool way to do it, but with the technology we have, this will work just fine. I'm gonna put an inserter here, and I'm gonna grab coal, okay? And I'm gonna just have it coal working um, back through here like this, okay? And um, I'm gonna have to actually, well, okay. I need to destroy this one and move it over is what I need to do. Okay. And we'll go ahead and just repair this like this. Now you'll notice they're out of fuel, right? They're complaining um, because they aren't getting enough fuel. I actually need to move this one over one more. Uh, I just placed this one not not in the best place for what I want to show you. Here we go. Okay. Um, there. So now um, what I have done is I've created an almost infinite loop of coal going around and around. And if I tell my inserters to grab coal off this line and put it in, okay, um, when we need power. What we will have, here, I'm gonna actually uh, run this instead. I'm gonna run it like this. Hmm. I did, I did this so badly. This is hilarious. Um, anyway, uh, this inserter right here, a power pole um, over here. Now this is getting power from its own coal. It's like making its own coal and feeding its own coal. Once we get some more um, technology, we can do this in a more elegant fashion. All right. But for now, um, I'm just going to get rid of this one. All right and put it in a, uh, a way that's better for us, which would be right here. It needs power? You got it. We'll get you power. Look at this, we've now doubled up because this is putting the coal on the second lane. You see, and you see how it's wrapping around on the top, and then now it goes back when it makes it all the way around to the bottom lane. So now we're getting a kind of um, cheeky double lane of coal. Now these burners will never run out of coal. We're going to switch to electric burners. Um, uh, I'm sorry, electric drills at some time, but these electric burners, how about not electric burners, but burner mining drills are indefinitely producing coal for us, and everything's going great. But we need to do so much more work. We need to start taking our ore and putting it right to our furnaces automatically from both sites and continuing to explore technology and getting research online as well. But everyone, this is a good first look at Factorio, explaining some of the very basics of the game and getting you in so that you can start to explore and understand some fundamentals um, as you go. Of course, what I have here will probably destroy and overhaul as we learn new things in the game. Um, but this is just an idea to get you started, and we will continue building and changing as we go. This isn't perfect. This isn't the only way to do this or the best way to do this. This is just a way that teaches you some of the mechanics, and I really hope that you're finding this instructional. If you have any questions for me, please post them in the comments below, and I'll check you next time when we get into some more um, tutorial lessons about Factorio. Take care.